welcome to Fighting Fit. I'm Layla, and with so many of you at home, we thought we'd bring you an epic workout. I'm joined by matron boxer Shannon Courtney and also oh, yeah. strength and conditioning coach Dan Lawrence. Dan, what are you going to put us through today? We're going to go through a workout consisting of 40 seconds of work followed by 20 seconds of recovery, so a minute in total duration, and it's going to be five exercises back to back. Amazing. We're going to go through a load of different exercises and work the body as one unit, so a total body workout. And Shannon, you've had two matches postponed. Yeah. How do you keep your, lev your head le level for this? I think during times like this, the best thing you can do is stay positive and stay professional. So yeah. keep training, you know, being out in the fresh air is helping. Even if you're sitting in your garden doing a little workout like we're doing today, keeps you in a good mind space so that when the phone rings and this is all over and I'm ready to fight, I'm, I'm in decent shape, ready to go. Brilliant answer, so true. Oh, let's do it then. We're keeping our social distancing. You guys can follow at home. If you don't have weights, what can they use? You can use you know, a multitude of things that you've got available at home. We just need some form of load through some of these movements, you know? So uh, whatever you can get your hands on at home, guys. Ready? Yep. Right, Shannon, we're going to start with a goblet squat. If we just grab one of those dumbbells. Yep. OK, chin down on the top of the dumbbell, sitting down into the imaginary chair, driving up and squeezing the glutes at the top. Lovely work. It's important we keep that chin down on the dumbbell because we don't want to be in this kind of flared rib position. So locking the core down, chin down, and sitting into that chair. Great work, Shannon. So you're starting with a tough exercise. We have. We started with a yeah, big compound movement in a squat. But yeah. And this will be working all the way through the legs, the glutes. Absolutely. Glutes, quads, and all of the lower body there for sure. Nice, Shannon. Now, you've prepared a certain amount of cycles and breaks. We have. Tell and us we're going to go into the second exercise now. If you pop the weight down, Shannon, we're going to go into the push up with the rotation. So, hands like so. Locking through the midline. We're going to wait until it, till it goes, but I will demonstrate. Come down and then drive up into the rotation, really using your core to resist against excessive rotation there, okay? You with me? Yep. Let's come down and then fire up. There you go. Core nice and tight and then back down. Love it. Nice, Shannon. It is a challenging one, this one. Really got to use the core to resist excessive rotation there. Shannon's got a really good posture as she goes down. Are you, are you trying to get that flat back? Yeah, absolutely. Keep the spine neutral, and that's where the core comes involved there. We're at the halfway point. Yes. Brilliant, Shannon. Let's change sides. So load, explode, and then stabilise. Awesome. Great work. And it's one of those guys, the more you do it, the more you get used to this motion as well. For people who might be finding this quite difficult, is there an adaption? Go slow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. We're going to grab the, uh, the dumbbell there again. Yeah. OK, we're going to hold it centrally in that goblet position. And we're now going to go in with a reverse lunge, OK? So it's going to be cues are stabilise, load and fire, OK? OK, wait until the time we've got an extra rep in there. OK, stabilise, load and fire. Nice, Shannon. Are you tapping your knee to the ground every time? Uh, knee just short of the ground. Okay. And the reason we say stabilise first, so a lot of people when they first do this, if they haven't grooved the pattern, they're going to be like Bambi on ice. So we just want to say decelerate, stabilise, load, and then fire back up. If okay, Shannon, let's change legs. If at home you are wobbling a lot, is that a case of just pressing If at home perfect? you can regress the movement into what we call a split squat, where you just come up and down. So this is a lunge variation, and this is a static split squat for a slight regression for those at home. Nice, Shannon. Five seconds remain. How are you finding it? Yeah, it's all right. <laughs> We're on a little bit of a hill here, awesome so... Work. we are. Trying to stay stable <laughs> on the hill. Right, the next exercise we're going to go through is a pulling exercise just to really work all of this kind of upper back area. Yep. Great for the boxers who are very kind of anteriorly dominant. So all we're going to do with this one is grab both of the dumbbells, flex the knee, hinge over, and then squeeze the upper back together, OK? There you go. And then squeeze. You got it. A little bit of rotation as the hands come up as well. There you go, Shannon. Lovely. Really pinch the shoulder blades together at the top. Head position, what, what should yeah, we Yeah, good for? question. So head and spinal position, we want a neutral head position. If you keep the chin down a little bit there, Shannon, that's it. So we don't want to be flared up into excessive extension. Chin down a little bit, hinge over, nice straight line from head to bum, and then squeeze. And with the feet as well, always pointing forward? Yeah, like feet, apart. exactly that. Keeping everything nice and straight. The main thing I'm concerned here is the spinal position. We don't want to be in that rounded position. We want to stick the bum out and maintain a neutral spine. Nice. And weights down and out the way, Shannon, if you can. So we've got your favourite one. We were talking off camera. 
She said, Dan, don't give me any burpees, but uh, I knew, unfortunately, I knew we had to go for it. <laughs> okay. Eight seconds rest, and then we're going to smash it for 40 seconds, all right? Let's be honest, nobody likes burpees, no. okay? <laughs> no one. Right, let's get it. So come in, and then boom, big drive up. Load, explode, and drive. So tell me about the importance of these explosive movements. Well, for a boxer especially, you know, it's not about how much force you can produce, it's how quickly you can produce that force. I wouldn't really put the burpee into that category. We do do a lot of explosive exercises with the fighters. Yeah. Uh, we call it rate of force development, so how quickly they can produce force, which is very important. Rate of force nice. development. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> nice, Shannon. And with this one, we're trying to keep the spine nice and straight. We've got 10 seconds remaining, Shannon. You're crushing it. Nice. For anyone with lower back issues here, again, we do have to be quite careful with the spinal position. And what you can do is elevate your hands well if need be to keep your spine nice and straight. That's round one done. So now we're going to repeat the same sequence again. Absolutely. So we're going to go through the same sequence again, 40 seconds on, 20 seconds off. So the intensity rises. Is this the sort of thing you tend to do in training? If we're doing circuit workouts, then yeah. Yeah. All right, Shannon, we're up. So back in with the goblets. So chin down, locking the core in, and sitting into that imaginary chair and driving up and squeezing. How important is it that your body's not really tilting forward on this one? Yeah, good, good question, Leila. Because we've got that anterior load placement, you know, with gravity, your body is going to want to tilt forwards. But that's yeah. why we give the cue chin down, locking through the anterior core. And once you maintain that stiffness and tension through here, you shouldn't be falling forward. You want to create total body tension. And if you feel your body being pulled forward, is it a case of just don't go as low? Um, you just work towards your active range of motion. I think the individual can adjust things accordingly. Yeah. They'll know where, whether they're doing it right or wrong. Great work, Shannon. Dumbbell out of the way. 20 seconds recovery. And then we're going to go with a push-up with a transverse rotation. What's happening to our body during that recovery? Why is it so important? Uh, we're just allowing everything to kind of reset, if you like. You yeah. know, there's, these exercises are quite complex at times. Um, so just by bouncing from one to the next, technique's going to go downhill. So uh, we want to maintain optimal technique always. Nice, Shannon. There you go. Remind me what you called these ones? Uh, push up with a transverse rotation. The transverse is basically just the plane of motion that we're working in. So think about this sagittal plane, up, down, forwards, and back. Frontal plane out to the side. Transverse plane with rotation for the guys at home. Nice, Shannon. Let's change sides. So already you can see Shannon's really starting to oh, curse the commentator. <laughs> um, master the movement now. Yeah, great work. We're also fighting some uh, windy conditions here as well, guys. Yeah, this is, this is a particularly tough exercise. <laughs> it is tough. Don't yeah. worry at home if you're not Stitch getting this you right. Here. Great work, Shannon. Well done. Okay, we're going to get that single dumbbell ready. Which one are we doing now? Uh, we've got our reverse lunges. That's it, reverse lunges. Pretty good. Yeah, nice. Crushing it. Five more seconds rest. Okay, so stabilise, load and fire. Lovely. Stabilise, load and fire. There's our three cues for the guys at home. Really easy to remember. We're looking for that 90 degree angle with both legs and maintaining a nice upright torso. Yeah, great work, Shannon. Awesome technique. OK, we're going to change legs in two, one, yep. And for the guys at home, because these are what we call unilateral single leg exercises, we're going to split the 40 seconds down the middle. We're going to do 20 seconds on one side, followed by another 20 seconds on the other side. When you start to feel that wobble in that front leg, what can you Just do? Just stabilise. Pause for a second, reset, and go again. Okay. Nice, Shannon. Pop that one down and grab the other one as well. Definitely warming up a bit now. Yeah, how are you feeling? <laughs> yeah, it's all right. You're quite focused when you're working out. Aren't yeah. You? Yeah. Because we spend so much time doing running and boxing, these things aren't my dominant things. So I try to right, concentrate so as much as I can. Hinge yeah. over. There you go. Perfect. And squeeze. Remember our head position, so don't be looking up too much. Squeeze that upper back. Again, really counteracting the boxer's posture, if you like. Yeah, great work, Shannon. How important is it to have that sort of range of different exercises as an athlete? It's really important as, as an athlete, as a human being, you know, to work the body as, as one unit and not just completely isolate one particular area. Yeah. Um, a lot of the guys really work in the chest on numerous exercises. Well, due to what we do in the Western world, and especially for boxers, just postural five issues, <laughs> five seconds, postural issues are a common thing. So doing exercises like this will really draw the shoulder blades back. So you want to have a, a fully functioning physique for sure. 
your training, do you have quite a range of different training yeah. techniques or do you sort of stick to one thing We've that works? We've got the same through? schedule every week but every day is different. Okay. Working on like explosive, explosive, explosive things, running, all different things. A long time for me to ask you these questions. <laughs> <laughs> nice shunt, let's get it. Burpees. <laughs> landing as well, you're both landing nice and light on the feet. Exactly that, taking care on the landing on all exercises for sure. And then exploding once our feet are set. And with the legs going back, are we trying to keep them at a hip width distance? Yeah, together? around about exactly, yeah, hip width, shoulder width apart for sure. And again, we don't want to, when we come down, be going into excessive extension right. through the spine, using your anterior core to resist against those forces. We want to get to an outcome, but we want to do it in the most safe and effective way. Nice shot. And time. Great work. The fact that the fact that these are all quite short. Um, and quite sort of intensive. I mean, that makes it quite fun and more distracting, right? Is it easier for you? Um, makes it harder. Why? But because you've not got a gap in between, so... Long enough. But it's good that you get a little bit of rest because then you can get more energy for the next set, set. Yeah. But the good thing about this is you can do this in your living room, can't you? So yes, if you're stuck indoors, so you can do this. Exactly, yeah, it's great. We only need a couple of dumbbells for this one, guys, or whatever you can, you've got available at home, so... But even if you've not got dumbbells, two bottles of water or two cans of beans, anything, just some sort of weight, exactly. that you can just do it indoors. And everyone can take part. Well, thank you very, very much. Stick with us. We've got another 10 minutes coming up after the break. Welcome back to Fighting Fit. I'm joined by Dan and Shannon. We've just done a good, solid, intensive 10 minutes, right? How are you feeling? Yeah, I feel good. Ready? Ready to go. What are you bringing to us now in the next 10 minute session? Okay, so we're going to go with a similar concept, but there's one variable we're going to manipulate on this, and that is tempo of movement on two of the exercises. So we're going to come down nice and slow and controlled. Okay, so we're going to make it a little bit harder. And why is that slow and controlled important? So we call that the eccentric phase or the negative phase of the movement and instead of just going up and down aimlessly you're really placing the muscle and system under more tension. The eccentric phase. Eccentric. That makes it sound phase. amazing. <laughs> right, let's do it. I'm going to start the clock. Are you ready? Right, Shannon, yep. I'm going to grab one of these. Which was this one? Uh, the with? heavy one, yep. So we're going to go with the goblet squat. We're going to come down for five, four, three, two, one and then aggressively come up with intent. Five, four, three, two, two, one, and then intense out the hole. So you really see the difference in tempo now. Eccentrically, we're coming down under control, and Shannon drives up with intent. It is really slow, too. That yeah. It just feels really hard watching that. <laughs> so people at home, if you don't have a weight, don't worry, you can pick up anything. Something is better than nothing. Bag of sugar, bottle of water. Nice, Shannon. Great work. Awesome control. 10 seconds. Is this a workout you could do with nothing as well? Uh, you could, depending on the individual, but we would like some form of load for sure. Great work, Shannon. Awesome. Let's put that weight down. We're going to then grab the other yeah. weight. So you've got a variation of weights here. What are the weights? Uh, the slightly lighter weight is for the upper body movements, and we're going to come into a split stance position now, which Shannon can obviously relate to with the boxer's stance. We're going to come up like so, locking the core down, and then coming up into a single arm overhead press. Nice, Shannon. There we go. Now, the distance between the legs, how are we defining yeah, that so at home? Yeah, so split stance. Shannon's adopted that position, which is obviously something she's very familiar with, with that foot position. What I will say, I'm going to be annoying to Shannon and ask her to come up onto her toes of the back foot as well there. Ah. Lovely. Just to increase the instability. That's halfway. We're going to change arms there, Shannon. So left arm, right leg lead, toes of the back foot. By coming up onto the toes of the back foot, you're increasing the recruitment through the core, OK? You're increasing instability, so you're then having to stabilise that a little bit harder. That's awesome work. Really trying to come up overhead there. Great work, Shannon. Weight down. That's awesome. We're going to change it back to the lower body now. So we've gone from lower to upper, back to lower body. So we're going to use the heavier load. I'll just talk you through this one, Shannon. So we're going to load you in the goblet position again. Yeah. Okay. This time we're going to go with the split squat. So the feet are going to remain static. We're going to come down for four, three, two, one, and then drive up. Four, three, two, one, and drive up. Awesome. Tell me about the importance of that drive up then. It's that explosiveness again. Yeah, again, manipulation of tempo. So we eccentrically want to come down under control and then concentrically drive up with a little bit more intent. 
It works a little bit better on the standard goblet squat because you're more grounded with a stable base. With this one, if you do come up with too much intent, you may lose stability, though we still want to coach a little bit of intent. And what's the long-term benefits of that? Change it. Uh, sorry? What's the long-term benefits of doing workouts? Like we're that? trying to we're trying to elicit an adaptation. We're trying to improve, okay? So by manipulating tempo, you can um, yeah, you can challenge the body in new ways. If you keep doing the same tempo and rep ranges, you're only gonna get so far. Okay, the next exercise, Shannon, we're gonna go with the lighter one now because we're going back to the upper body. Split starts. Four seconds. That's it. And then drawing in towards the hip. There we go, lovely. Awesome. As you can see, Shannon's really adopted the correct position there. Lo lovely straight line from head to backside and squeezing in towards the hip there. Awesome work. There's a nice. twist happening as well. There's a little bit up. of rotation there as well. If you change arms there, Shannon, we're just at the halfway point. Yeah, exactly that. Just to allow the shoulder blade to articulate around the rib cage a little bit smoother. It's a little bit more shoulder friendly that way instead of just blocking yourself in like so. Okay, 10 seconds. That's awesome work, Shannon. Really arcing motion in towards the hip there. Love it, Shannon. Well done. Awesome work. Let's get the weights out of the way. Nice. Now we're going to go with our jump squats, OK? So we're going to go hands on the hips for this one. Yep. And uh, the cue is load to explode, OK? We don't just want to, again, produce force. We want to absorb force on landing. So load, absorb. Load, absorb, OK? And let's go. Nice, Shannon. Good. This is going to get the heart rate going, isn't it? Certainly will, yeah. yeah. This one has definite metabolic cost on this one. And uh, we've really got to take care on that landing. So again, we want to absorb force and then reproduce it, okay? The key to this one, we don't want those knees buckling in. You know, try and maintain, yeah, pro a proper technical model. And why hands Shannon. on the hips? Uh, hands can go wherever you choose, okay? Shannon's opted for the hands on hip preference because you don't really want to be thinking about your hands on this one, okay? We just want to focus on the exercise is hard enough as it is. Yeah. <laughs> Nice, Shannon, nearly there. Three, two, one, and time. Awesome, round one done. So now we're going to repeat it again. Absolutely, now we're going to we go through the doing. same series. Keep up the intensity. Nice, right, Shannon, yeah. So you're using the lighter weight for the upper body? Exactly that, yeah. Um, you know, larger muscles in the lower body, we need a bit more load to go through that. Okay, let's go with the goblets. Remember our tempo at home, guys. Five, four, three, two, one, and then drive up with intent. Yeah, nice, Shannon, great control. Shannon's got great focus and determination, obviously an, a, an athlete and a competitor. For people at home who are struggling, what is it that you need to sort of help inspire yeah. someone to push through? Well, the great thing about this is we're giving you the framework. We're giving you the exercise. That's one thing you haven't got to worry about. Get the tunes going, create the environment. I appreciate that's hard at home, even for me as a strength and conditioning coach. But you just got to get your head right and get in the zone, guys, mm -hmm. you know? And it's only, you know, it's like five more minutes left. Yeah, yeah exactly. Not long. Yeah, great squats. Really nice. So, gonna go back into our split stance overhead. Feeling good? Yeah. Yeah, doing well. <laughs> I'm going to let you breathe. <laughs> let you Here we breathe. go. So let's get set up. Legs long, up as the toes. And coming up like so. Locking that core down as well. Remember, guys, we've got one dumbbell for this exercise. If you're not engaging through the midline, you're just going to lose stability. So we're actually getting additional benefits through the core as well here as the shoulders and tricep. OK, coming up to the halfway point there. Exactly. 20 seconds. OK, let's change. That's it, lock it down, create stability, and then come up overhead. Shannon, what do you use for motivation? Um, the fact that I've got a fight date normally. Yeah. So at the moment, I'm just trying to stay motivated, knowing that once it's all over, I'll be fighting again soon, so... It's that end game, isn't it? Yeah. And it's great to have a goal, you know, for an elite level athlete. They're like Shannon having that goal, reverse engineering the process and reaching it. For the guys at home, you know, the goal of this is we give you the framework and let's just execute it. It's a real time to learn to adapt too, hey? Yeah, you've got to adapt, adapt to it now. Okay, controlled split squats. There we go, don't forget that tempo. Four, three, two, one. Four, three, two, one. Slowing it down makes it so much harder, dude. Yeah, absolutely. You feel it more in your core and your hips as well. Nice. 
Okay, let's change legs. Nice How show. many more exercises after this? After this one, we've got our rows and then we've got our jump squats where we're going to do the beat the boxer challenge. So just two more. Yeah. Nice, Shannon. Three, two, one. Great control. Well done. Rest. Right, yeah. I guess your body recovers so quickly, doesn't she? Yeah. Because that's just part of having been doing something like this for such a long time. Yeah, I wear a heart rate monitor when I train as well. So I can see when I say I hit the red zone, how long it takes me to get back down to the blue. Fast recovery time. Okay, arc it in. Yeah, nice. Nice I'm show. saying that to remind people at home who might be finding this difficult, being like, but she's finding it so easy. <laughs> like, she's a boxer, don't compare yourself. You just got to do things within your own limitations, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Okay, three, two, one. Let's change sides. What about breathing here? Because when it gets tough, you kind of tend to hold your breath. Yeah, absolutely. So, again, good question. We want to maintain tightness through the midline, so you want to lock through there, but still maintain, you know, a normal breathing pattern there as well. You know, breathing, especially at these high, higher intensities, is very important for the guys at home especially. Nice, Shannon. OK, we're going to chuck that out of the way. And now the last one. And this is the opportunity that you can um, take part and try attempt to beat the boxer. It's our challenge. All the details are on screen for our social media and you can send us your clips. We want you to try and get competitive here. Okay. And we don't really want anyone to beat you, do we? <laughs> do as many as you can. One, two, three, nice. four, five, six. Now, there's no point in someone trying to be too quick, though, is there? Very good point. You know, as much as this is the Beat the Boxer challenge, we still want to adhere to the technical model we've spoken about, about producing and absorbing force, OK? So we don't just want to go for a million reps and then buckle in with the knees. Safety first, guys. 21, 22, 23. 15 seconds left. Nice, Shannon. Let's go. Work to the end. Work to the end. Let's go. 30. Great focus. Six, 37, 38. You've got to have got more than 38 to beat Shannon. Well done. How is it for you? Yeah, it's all right. I yeah. feel I've had a workout, I can tell. <laughs> I like her calmness and intensity. Yeah, she's dialed in. She's you know, dialed you can in. Tell she's an athlete. So, they've done the hard work recovery wise. Is this time to sit down and eat? It's time to sit down for sure. You know, the, the hard work has been done, guys. So, uh, sit down, chill, and be proud of your efforts. Thank you both so, so much. You've been watching Fighting Fit. We'll see you next time.